Well, Mike, the busiest, busiest man in Massachusetts right now, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having us, thanks for coming to the event. Yeah, big event this year. The biggest ever. Yeah, the biggest ever, the most companies, the most politicians, the most regulators, and the most fun, definitely the most fun. Was that because it was uh, sort of led by the Mike Minogue initiative? No, it's the Avamed team, it's yeah. the committee, Carol Neubauer, uh, Mahoney's just a lot of fun, and um, the whole group did an awesome job. We had an, uh, 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 Dr. Myron Roll, I inspirational speaker. Uh, we had some really good keynote speakers, and uh, last night we had Jim Gaffigan, which is, just makes it a lot of fun. Unbelievable. The MedTech uh, Vets was an incredible session as well. Yeah, MedTech Vets is the program that helps transitioning veterans get jobs in MedTech. That's what I did uh, more than 25 years ago, whatever that, that year was. And uh, it's a good program. Derek Carrera has taken it to the next level. When COVID hit, the benefit is everything went virtual. So rather than trying to fly around to cities and connect everything, he has a 12-week program and they're on virtual calls every week. You've, you've participated on how to interview, write resumes and they're the best and the brightest, they're diverse, and uh, they want to continue to serve a purpose, and that's what MedTech is all about, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a great success. And we passed the baton from Derek to Patrice Sutherland, my classmate from West Point, uh, who uh, was a Signal Corps officer. She's, been, she's at Integra, and she is fired up and going to take it to the next level after that. So super excited for MedTech Vets. Can't wait to see what she does. Yeah. So, Mike, as I was going through the roster before I got here this week, we all do that. You know what I noticed? I noticed a lot of investment bankers, financial people, more so than usual. Why is that in this show? Well, Joe, there's a, there was a bit of a void to fill since JP Morgan hasn't had an event in, I think, three years. And MedTech has a very vibrant economy. Uh, I think the, the top 10 drugs are bigger than 80% of our industry. And when you think about a forum for medical technology, regulators, politicians, investment uh, bankers, private equity, this is really the best place to come. And I think you're gonna see this meeting get bigger and better. Uh, this is where you'll go to learn about regulatory policy. This is where you'll go to get funding. This is where you'll go to meet the, the new innovators. And the secret sauce of the space, and you know this because of your background, is about 75% of all the companies in med tech have less than 100 people and aren't profitable, but it's a massive focus on innovation that improves patient outcomes, and that's what makes med tech special. And that's what makes Avamed special as well. Absolutely. Right? It's an incredible organization that the startups don't get involved with early enough, and they really should. They should, and they are. If you look at uh, Avamed, we have the, the most uh, startups, the most small companies, and what a lot of companies are now doing, including Abiumed, is we invest in companies to, to see if they're successful. Not necessarily that we're going to acquire them, but maybe we invest in them along the way. So we've invested in access closure companies. We invested early in Shockwave, and they've done great. We invested in CathWorks, and they've done great. And so there is a, a system here where our companies might invest in new technology, help mentor and help the process along the way. And that really is a great way to generate more technology, more innovation for the field. You mentioned Abiumed, so I want to go there for a moment. <clears throat> it, uh, it's obviously here in Massachusetts. Uh, it's, you and I went to lunch a couple years ago and, and uh, I said, Mike, you're crushing it. When are we going to start looking at acquisitions? You looked at me straight in the eyes, you go, Joe, I never get distracted. But in the last two years, three years, you've picked up a couple acquisitions. True. And we expanding out in our heart failure space. I know we're a publicly traded company, but what's out in the domain, what could you share with our viewers? We're starting to spread out a little bit outside the incredible Impella platform. Sure, so from a military strategy or a business strategy, the key element is focus. Yeah. So you have to focus, you have to win big somewhere. And so we win big as heart pumps that recover. We're the only technology, the only heart pumps designed and made to recover hearts and save lives. And they're minimally invasive and they unload the left ventricle. So it's the unloading element, working with the heart, forward flow with sensors to help you help it rest and recover. 
And that's where we still have a long way to go, in the cath lab, surgical suite, ICU, EP lab. But we have an array of products. So we've diversified and have the surgical products. The Impella 5.5 is grown over 100% since COVID. There's no other heart pump in the world like it. It can be put in minimally invasively in less than 60 minutes. Conventional heart pumps, you had to sew open or sew open the chest, spread the ribs, put holes in the heart, and that's not conducive for recovery or if you're 70 years and above and you have to go on a heart-lung machine. So we have more work to do and we're doing that, but uh, Jim Collins talks about the hedgehog and, and I'm a student and fan of Jim Collins. He's been a consultant for the company for over 10 years. The hedgehog of recovery expands a little bit to the lungs and to the kidneys. And so the lungs, someone has a cardiac arrest or COVID, sometimes they have heart and lung problems and that's where patients get ECPELA. They put an impella in to unload and protect the heart while they put ECMO in the patient to oxygenate the body. Now ECMO alone will oxygenate the body but at the expense of the heart. It may sacrifice the heart because it's retrograde flow. It makes the heart work more. By doing the two in combination, now you get ECPELA, you recover the lungs, you recover the heart. For the kidneys, if you don't get renal flow, the brain will trigger the kidneys to preserve the blood and now you don't get the impurities out of the blood, you get the edema and now the heart has to pump against more pressure. So with our renal perfusion of impella unloading, there's a hormonal connection, but also precardia tricks the system because it's a balloon that's in the superior vena cava and it opens up for five minutes and it reduces the amount of blood from the right side to the left side. So in your left ventricle, you have a pressure volume curve, and I'm not gonna get that technical, but you're just not inflating the left ventricle that much. You're keeping it at a smaller amount. On the Starling curve, it doesn't hurt the cardiac output. And by just keeping it smaller, it works less and it drops the pressure so the kidneys will turn back on and produce urine. Now these patients are not yet in shock. They have acutely decompensated heart failure but the diuretics work on some of them, but on a third of them, it doesn't work. And that's around 300,000 patients a year in the US. And it might, the precardia might even help the diuretics work better in those patients so that they don't have to go on in, or go into shock. So it's really coordinated around heart, lung, and kidneys. And now we have a package that we can provide uh, support, but also keep the patient from dying of both the lungs and the kidneys as well. Makes sense now to me. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Abiumed continues to expand here in Massachusetts. We're down in uh, uh, Maryland now as well, right? Yes. Just outside Baltimore. Uh, the new facility is gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're bringing a swagger to New England MedTech. Like that facility is like being in Silicon Valley. Is that what we need to bring? Like, Massachusetts is the epicenter of medical device. It is, and I'm very biased, and uh, I think it's the, one of the best places to live. You have the best schools, the best hospitals, uh, you got entrepreneurialism is celebrated. But what we also want to do with Abiumed 2.0 post-COVID is make our campus fun, do stuff there, make people want to go there. So we have two properties, and uh, we did an exercise walking trail, but with exercise equipment around it that can stay outside. We redid a pond. We put a leadership reaction course, same one that's at West Point. It's not like pull-ups, but it's a puzzle course that teams have to go through and get through obstacles and solve problems and work as a team. We have that. And then we do food trucks, we do parties, we do events just to get people to want to be there. And we have free testing anytime you want with antigen. So the great thing is that people can come and feel safe. And if you're taking antigen tests, you have any symptoms, a lot of times you'll pick it up on day two, which means you don't have a viral load that you're really contagious. You go home and two days later, you don't, you don't feel well, but you haven't infected people. So we really have tried to create an opportunity for people when we're together, more interaction, more fun. Um, and we also don't want to have too many meetings where you're looking at slides. So we do our slides still through the virtual but we've canceled and cut a lot of the bureaucratic stuff so we can be faster, more efficient, make better decisions. And all our meetings start off with a slide that says, is the decision gonna be made? If it is, is there homework to it that you have to provide? And if there's not, why am I on? Am I optional? 
because I am not an optional person if you put me on a call. You either need me on the call or you don't. You either need a decision or don't. And at the bottom, you have the follow-up. And this way, people don't get 100 invites for optional calls. And if you're really going to do a call, it has to have a purpose. So that's why we're, we're trying to make it fun and exciting. But as you say, more and more companies here are going to continue to come to Boston because the whole system is set up for success. <clears throat> Startup in Boston, in Massachusetts, Greater Massachusetts, one of the best areas to start a company. Universities, clinical settings, previously experienced entrepreneurs, CEOs. You have written a playbook with Abby Ahmed, probably unparalleled, this is my biased opinion, in the med device industry based on pure evidence, on where you've taken it. When did we bring Impella over? How many years ago? 15 years ago? 2005. Okay, so about 16 years ago, we brought 17, we brought Impella over. And you took one version of Abiumed to the version it is today. One of the best performing stocks, I think it went public the same year as Google, if I'm not mistaken, and you've outperformed those. What do you tell young emerging CEOs today as they're staring down range? What would they need to focus on first and foremost? And what do they need to stop focusing on? So I think the main focus is to simplify what you need to do. And so as the flywheel starts, Avimed's all about innovation. And what is innovation? Innovation is where you improve patient outcomes. That's the first definition. Does this product, does there a version of this product, doesn't improve a patient outcome, what's the clinical need? The second piece of innovation is does it make it easier for the customer, for the physician? Because if it makes it easier, that's a benefit that usually also translates to better outcomes. But too many times, you might get better outcomes, but they're so complicated, the adoption curve won't be there. The third element of innovation is minimize the risk of biology, because biology eats engineering for lunch. And what that means is, anticoagulation, reduce bleeding events, reduce the invasiveness of it, and make sure that anything that can cause harm to the patient in the treatment is minimized. And those are the things we focus. And then when you put that into place, you have to know the difference between experience and wisdom. Experience is having to go through something. Wisdom is that you suffered and you learned from it. And once you figure that out, you're never afraid to take an opportunity to make a decision to make change. And you have to have that courage, but believe in what you're doing. If you solve problems for patients, you'll be wildly successful. Don't complicate it with all the other things, gross margin, profitability timelines, all those things. Stay solely focused on patients and their outcomes, and you'll be wildly successful. Mm. And then before the cameras went on, you and I were chatting around the word speed and how sometimes it's misinterpreted, but it could be one of the best weapons we have. Tell me about that. So speed in history, speed in sports, it wins, right? I have a daughter who's super fast and you can't coach super fast. And in history and military, speed is an advantage. And if you are more efficient, if you do the things I was talking about is minimize wasted meetings, wasted long time to make decisions, put things in standard operating procedures so it's fast, you'll have an advantage because you are going to produce positive change faster for patients, for customers. And I humbly say that if you talk to customers about our technology, usually what they say, if they've never seen a company introduce a product and revolutionize it so quickly as we go. But to do that, you have to have investment in manufacturing where the engineers can walk into the manufacturing facility. So at Danvers, that's our global headquarters, my engineers are in that lab. And in Aachen, Germany, where we manufacture, my engineers are in that lab. We have full redundancy, so we learn. But that team is going in and out, so we learn how to go fast because they never get more than three months to produce the same thing. That's how we're able to do this amazing improvement in the products as we go, which has happened from 2.5 to CP to ECP to 5.5 and now to the BTR pump. You have to have that speed. And in life, speed's an advantage, but what it isn't is rushing and not doing your homework. If you go play a game of chess and you just go fast, you're gonna lose your queen. But if you play with the mindset that I'm gonna go fast and calculated, and my competitor, if they're not gonna have a clock, they're just gonna be left in the dust. And that's because if you take too long, 
then you don't make a decision, you miss the opportunity. And that's why speed's so important. Awesome. Mike, I know you're busy. I appreciate this time you were able to steal away from all this. Great, thanks Always. for coming and, and the exposure for MedTech. You appreciate right. it. Appreciate it. God bless. I'm Joe Mullings, live, Avamed 2022, from the floor. Be well.